Hey there, it's your good buddy, head of section, Joseph Darlington, being James Bond. What's going on? Uh, as I was sitting at my desk this morning, uh, working on some material for some new videos, uh, something jumped out at me. Benjamin Lin, over at the Bond Bulletin, did a spectacular video where he talked about the results of his survey. Uh, this was an extensive survey. This was a pretty big endeavor. Uh, and so kudos to Benjamin Lin for doing this. Uh, personally, I thought this was spectacular. Uh, one of the things that really resonated with me was that the whole thing felt kind of like a State of the Union address. I mean, this was uh, a report card on the, the status, the current status of James Bond and the James Bond community. Uh, I, I really thought this was very, very well done. And honestly, I just, I, I thought all the information in it was great. Uh, again, it was just about people's perceptions of what's happening in the world of James Bond currently. Uh, also your favorites, your favorite era, your favorite director, your favorite actor playing Bond. Uh, and also, of course, the James Bond community at large, content creators like myself uh, and how we're doing. And now, of course, that was, you know, a big part of what kind of jumped out at me. So, um, you know, I was I was really thrilled with this. And, and I hope that Benjamin, I, I'm pretty sure, probably based on the success of this, he'll probably do uh, surveys, a kind of a survey more often where he's doing something a little more specific in the world of Bond. But I, I really hope that he kind of does this on at least an annual basis. Because, um, like I said, I mean, it just sort of felt like a, a report card on where we are and what people want. And I, this was kind of, um, I, I think this is incredibly valuable stuff. So, uh, yeah, once again, kudos to Benjamin Lin. And let's talk about some of the things that we found out. So, yeah, he talked about the official Eon sites, uh, the 007.com website, their social media outlets. Uh, I think they av all averaged a score of seven, and I'd say that's probably pretty accurate. These sites are good. You know, they put out some good stuff. If you need a dose of James Bond, it's uh, they're, they're nice looking. Uh, so why the hell not? I mean, I wouldn't say it's, um, you know, not stuff I can't go without uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, but pretty good. Sean Connery was the favorite James Bond. No surprise there with Daniel Craig running uh, second place. Uh, favorite era, the 60s. Naturally, it was going to be the 60s. I put down the 80s when I filled out my survey. Um, but sure, I mean, how can you can't beat the 60s. I mean, I, the 60s is, is the golden era of James Bond. No surprise there. Martin Campbell took a top spot for directors. If you're going to, you know, essentially rescue the franchise twice uh, in two different decades, I, I, I'd say you deserve the top spot for that one. Another one that I don't think was a surprise, John Barry, the uh, won, won the top spot for composers. David Arnold coming in second place. So again, these were a lot of fun, you know, just kind of like our favorite this and our favorite that. So uh, really good stuff. Uh, then we get into the Bond community. And of course, that's where I kind of perked up and said, oh, OK, so what do, what do we got here? So this one I thought was kind of funny. 98% uh, said that they enjoy being part of the global James Bond community. 2% said they do not enjoy it. Uh, so to the 2%, I would say, well, thank you for uh, toughing it out and remaining part of the community, even though you don't actually enjoy it. <laughs> uh, but I think what this actually says is that the vast majority of the people who, who would take part in the survey really do enjoy being part of this community, to which I would agree wholeheartedly because I think it's, it's spectacular. Uh, which brings me to content creators. Yours truly came in number three on the list of content creators, people's favorite content creators. Guys, thank you so much for this. This was incredible. Uh, that first of all, it's incredibly humbling and that is a damn good looking list uh, to be on. So that's pretty, that was just pretty damn cool. Uh, and and the, the two guys ahead of me, I mean, obviously, David Zariski is just killing it with content every, multiple times a week. Uh, and Calvin, I mean, I've been watching Calvin since before I kind of segued over to doing videos. Uh, he's the guy is he's top in his class of what he does. So again, this is this is very humbling. And, and again, I just want to say thank you so much for the people who, who voted for yours truly. Um, but again, uh, there were some other questions in this about uh, about content creation and what we can do, what we're doing good and uh, where we can improve a little bit. 
The fandom school's very old, which I'm not blaming anyone for, except Eon. They've done an appallingly bad job at appealing to anyone that isn't 40 or older. At 34, I feel like one of the young guys in the fandom, and that's a huge problem. Yeah, guilty as charged. Uh, to that, I'll just simply say, well, first of all, I mean, I, I've kind of been a fan since I was a teenager, so uh, maybe that gets me a little leeway in that respect. Uh, but the water's fine. Uh, jump on in the 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 newer blood. The, I mean, we're getting a barrage of new content creators all the time. I mean, to the to the point where I I can't even keep up with it. Uh, but I think it's a great thing that we're getting younger blood, fresh blood, um, and just younger fans that are sort of. I mean, you know, one of the big complaints we've had in the last few years is that we don't get video games and the kind of thing that would bring in younger fans. Uh, so the fact that there are younger fans coming in, despite all that is good news. So I, I kind of sort of welcome this um, criticism a little bit. So again, the water's fine, jump on in. There's always uh, room for newer, younger fans. Also, this is more of a minor pet peeve, but it's annoying how the entire Bond fan community seems pathologically incapable of producing a single podcast that sticks to any sort of regular schedule. Guilty as charged. Uh, I, I will say in my defense, I mean, I, I, you know, when I first started podcasting, I would have spurts where I'm, I'm going pretty regularly. And then I would have, you know, times when I'm not doing anything for weeks, sometimes even months. Uh, life gets in the way. I mean, again, I don't do this professionally. <laughs> this is still a hobby. Uh, so I, I really can't be held to, to an official schedule. Uh, I, I wish I had that problem. Uh, but again, in the 15 years, and it is going on 15 years, um, I started in 2006, it's 2021, so this year, and I have to remember to do something for my 15 year anniversary, uh, this will be 15 years of doing this. So I think what, what you try to do is say, you know, if I'm going to start a series, uh, if I'm going to start doing interviews and I'm going to do them weekly, uh, you, you try to you make a schedule, you go for a couple months, and then when you, you're done, you take a break. Uh, and you kind of regather and, and decide what you're going to do next. Uh, the videos I did with Scott, the reviews I did with Scott, uh, again, we, we set out to do them every other week leading up to the release of the film um, until we started hitting more delays and then we slowed down a little bit. But again, you, the idea is that you you pick a, you pick and choose your battles, you, you do things, you, you stick to a schedule, um, and then you take a break. Uh, but I, I could, I, I think I will take that criticism though, and and give some thought into doing something, maybe on a more regular basis. I mean, I certainly can't do a daily um, podcast on James Bond. I don't know what I would talk about every day, even weekly. I think would be kind of stretching it. However, I think the the point is taken, and it, it is something I will kind of think about more. Another user complained that there are too much offerings to follow. Would love to see specialists on things versus too many people trying to do the same thing. And do I really need to spend time listening to inside jokes and banter? Give me properly constructed information, less opinion. Uh, I don't really have much to offer that one as well, except to say, I mean, we are talking about a fictional character. We are talking about art. We're talking about films. We're talking about books. Um, so any commentary we have on it is obviously going to be opinion. Uh, when you, if you're looking for properly constructed information, I, I believe you're talking about news. Uh, and if that's what you're looking for, uh, I would recommend um, the, uh, the Spy Command. Uh, Bill Koenig does up to the minute uh, email blasts when news about the Bond films are announced. Um, I would also recommend David Lee's James Bond dossier. He does a, a great uh, newsletter that he sends out periodically. And, and again, that will have news with regards to the, uh, the, the, the I guess, announcements with regards to filming, etc. cetera. Um, there you go. Other than that, um, again, we are talking about a fictional character. So the commentary that we have is going to be opinion. So. So again, kudos to Benjamin Lin, the Bond Bulletin. Uh, this was really incredible. Uh, I put the link in the description if you haven't already seen his video. Uh, check it out. It was spectacular. It was well done, well put together. The Benjamin Lin always does really good looking videos, by the way. His, his graphics are second to none. Uh, so I, again, I hope we see this uh, fairly regularly because it was 
like, like I said earlier, it, it felt like a, it was a status report. It was the State of the Union address for James Bond and the, and the James Bond global fan community. Uh, so hats off. And uh, that's it. Uh, yours truly will be back with a couple more videos uh, pretty soon. And uh, I'll be seeing you. Thanks again, Benjamin Lynn. Folks, see you soon. Take care. <laughs>